Good morning and welcome to another episode of Faith and Consciousness. One of the things that I have found often with clients and people that I meet, it's this issue of empowerment, which seems to be so elusive. And I mentioned that off the bat, because empowerment is in so many cases the most elusive and the most difficult aspect or component that people require in order to genuinely live more meaningful lives. To find purpose is to find direction and freedom, and to a large extent, a significant amount of autonomy. Although we won't fully experience autonomy, simply because we have relationships and we have expectations and we have commitments and we have obligations. And although we should keep expectations at a minimum, we struggle with always somehow possessing them. And I think it's always much better to be honest than to assume that we're going to completely um, clear ourselves, divest ourselves in its entirety from that. That being said, though, I think the issue here is how do I find empowerment? How can I find within myself that inner strength and meaning that will help me to face the challenges that I uh, just have to by the near um, aspect of my being in relationships or with my employer, at school. So, if we add to that, <clears throat> excuse me, if we add to that the component of people who have been struggling for such a long time to get better along personal lines and to step away once and for all of past experiences and frustrations anger, hurt, feelings of inadequacy or incompetence or other more serious factors that they have to live with each and every day. I'm amazed how many times people don't give themselves permission. That people don't simply say, I choose. Most people don't feel or even believe that they are in any position whatsoever to give themselves that opportunity to choose. I cannot tell you, my listener, how many times I've heard people say to me that they never thought that they would ever be able to just articulate with meaning, with genuine, heartfelt authenticity, those words, I give myself permission. Or, I choose to do this. Inner speech is a fascinating component of psychological study. Inner speech was uh, a part and parcel of Jean Piaget's work and Lev Vygotsky's work and many who studied the lifespan of the human being in developmental psychology. But if you also take other uh, expressions. I think inner speech is something that in depth psychology is very important and emotional intelligence uh, certainly is a field where inner speech plays a huge role. How I speak to myself, how I regulate my thoughts, my feelings, my actions, self-regulation, how I direct myself, self-direction, and how I am able to manage my thoughts, my feelings, my actions, is ultimately the ability to have control over myself so that I am able to channel my focus, my awareness, my energy, my day to the extent that I will be able to see it to be see it through as productive, as meaningful. And so many people end up unable to do that 
and they feel they've wasted their day, then their week, then their month, and the next thing you know, they feel that they've missed out on years because they are overwhelmed by these experiences or these um, these fears, these insecurities, these senses in so many manifold ways that they manifest themselves of inadequacy and whatnot. And they never step back and say to themselves, I give my permission to recognize that this is how I felt. I've given myself permission to recognize that I feel this way about me. But now I choose to do otherwise. It may seem somewhat superfluous to to emphasize that. But when you've really believed all your life that others have power over you, when you authentically have accepted that you have no control over your life circumstances, that you are in essence a slave to your feelings, to your past, to things that have been done to you, etc., etc., there is an incredible sense, unimaginable sense of relief and a release, and yes, a freedom. In being able to once and for all say, I choose to do otherwise. So I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to give yourself the freedom, to give yourself the permission that when these thoughts become quite overbearing, that you just step back and rather than fight these thoughts, stop and say to yourself, I give myself permission without judgment. And we'll talk about that next time. What does that mean to think of something without judgment? But in essence, you think about these thoughts in the sense of you don't entertain them, you recognize them. Well, right now I'm having a feeling of inadequacy. I give myself permission to recognize that. I'm feeling inadequate. And then thereafter you simply say, but I choose going forward, to feel adequate and empowered. And I know it's a tough road ahead of me. I know that it's easy for me to think I'm inadequate. I know that that's my go-to, my default. But I give myself the authority. I give myself the permission to choose otherwise now. You will be amazed at how much hope that will that will invoke in you, how much of a sense of energy and strength you will acquire. Because maybe for the first time ever, you have invested in yourself those words and you've divested yourself simultaneously of those painful thoughts. You've acknowledged them. You don't have to entertain them. You recognize that they were a part of your history, but they don't have to be ongoing companions in your life. Next time we'll talk about what it means to experience life without judgment and what are the responsibilities and what are the expectations, if any, that we will have to endure. I'd like to tell you that the expectations that you have of yourself are not the same as having expectations about life. We'll unfold and unpack that later on because it tends to be something that often people bring up to me. And after I clarify it, they tend to be much more eager to live that way. But just as a little teaser, I'll say to you that I can expect from myself that I will be able to to live a life where I can tell myself I am willing to do what I need to do. I am willing to do what I want to do for myself so that I can live a better life. I can expect that next time this happens, I will tell myself, um, I give permission to myself to, to hear myself say what I said, but I don't have to pursue it. I give my, per, myself permission to recognize that I had a feeling at this moment of inadequacy or of anger or of hurt. That can be an expectation. That the next time that comes around, now you have the tools to handle that. But having an expectation about life is different in the sense that if you're going to go to a job interview, 
you know, don't have expectations. Just experience it there and then. Because expectations of those sorts tend to limit our possibility. We then have preconceived notions about people, preconceived notions about ourselves, and that's what gets us in trouble. We'll talk more about that in our next session. I hope this has been meaningful to you. I hope that you are able to listen, perhaps, to a new possibility in these words for you, that you're able to find in these 10 minutes of conversation, 11 minutes of conversation, that you can, in fact, empower yourself in a way that you've never even thought of in the past. And that can be the beginning of a meaningful, vibrant, and dynamic life for you and for your loved ones, because you deserve it. You were created to have purpose and meaning and to enjoy this life. And it's about time that you do. I wish the very best for you and your families. I hope you're safe and well. And again, please share this podcast with anyone that you feel will benefit from it. And please subscribe and please send comments and questions. And I'm available should you want to explore spiritual direction or spiritual companionship in the future. All my best to you and yours. Blessings. Take care. Bye-bye.